All right, so for our first worked example, here is a, an actual multiple choice question from a real exam. Uh, so we have a conservative force uh, with the potential energy uh, shown above, and we'll talk about in class what a conservative force is. Uh, a particle moving in one dimension under the influence of this force has kinetic energy one joule when it's at position x1. So let's actually just stop for a moment. And we're saying when we're at position x1, we have a kinetic energy of one joule. Well, looking at our graph, when we're at position x1, it's also fairly clear that we have a potential energy of negative two joules. So one of the pieces of advice, right, whenever you're working with these, uh, is draw a total energy line. Draw a horizontal uh, total energy line. Well, what is our total energy? Uh, well, it should be one joule plus negative two joules. So I'm going to say that our total energy is negative one joule. And if it bothers you that our total energy is negative, uh, that's okay. Uh, remember, potential energy doesn't really have a zero. So let's just draw a line at negative one joule. That's our total energy line. All right, cool. Uh, and we start off with, again, we're starting off here at this point with some kinetic energy. We don't actually know which way we're moving, but we're moving you know, left or right. Uh, which of the following is a correct statement about the motion of the particle? Well, let's think about what's going to happen. Let's say it's moving to the right with some velocity because it's got kinetic energy. Well, it's going to come up. Uh, and once it reaches negative one joule uh, of potential energy, then all of its energy will be potential, no kinetic, and it'll kind of come back. So it'll actually just bounce back and forth between these two points. So let's take a look at what it says. Uh, a, it oscillates with a maximum position x2 and a minimum position x0. Well, the problem is it, it kind of does that. It kind of oscillates back and forth, but it can't actually reach x2 because x2 would require it to have an energy of a total energy of zero joules. It doesn't have that much energy to begin with. There's not enough kinetic energy to get it up there. So it actually can't do that. It can't uh, get to position x2 or position x0. Similarly, b is out. It can't get to x3. Uh, c is out. It can't get past x0. It can't even get to x0. d, it's not going to come to rest because, uh, again, it can't get there. So actually, the only answer is E. It cannot actually reach x0 or x2. It doesn't have enough energy. It's kind of capped by that total energy line. Capped by that total energy line. Uh, our second example here uh, is actually an FRQ from 2009. Uh, so now I can't give you this one. Thanks, Bates. So we've got a 3 kilogram object moving along the x-axis in a region where its potential energy uh, is given by ux equals uh, 4x squared. So actually, I went ahead and you know, did my favorite Desmos. And so here's 4x squared. Um, here's 4x squared. Um, uh, when the object passes the point, negative uh, 0.5 meters, so when we're, here, when we're here at x equals negative 0.5, uh, its velocity is 2 meters per second, uh, positive 2 meters per second, so it's moving to the right. Uh, and it wants us to calculate the total mechanical energy of the object. Well, for part A, we know that our total energy is going to be potential plus kinetic. Uh, our potential energy, well, we know where we are. So our potential energy would be 4 times negative uh, 0.5 meters squared, because again, we know our function. Uh, we know our kinetic energy, OK, 1 half times 3 kilograms times uh, 2 squared. So let's see, this is going to be 1 joule, 4 times 1 fourth. Uh, this will be f plus 6 joules, I believe. And we get a total energy of 7 joules. So if I, if I just come to my diagram here and quickly put that horizontal line in, uh, we are going to be capped uh, here forever at 7 joules. That's, that's the most we're going to get. Uh, part B asks us to calculate the x coordinate of any position, of any point at which the object has zero kinetic energy. Well, uh, if we're here, we're going to do, 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 climb up that curve until we touch that little cap, at which point all of our energy is potential energy. So the real question is uh, when does that happen? Well, it's going to happen for part B when our 4x squared, when our, our potential energy, uh, is equal to 7 joules. So I can go ahead and solve that. x squared equals 7 fourths. And that actually gives me two answers. x equals, and I think it's like about plus 1.3 meters. And of course, uh, negative 1.3 meters, because it'll just bounce back and forth between those two points. Uh, 
Uh, for part C, I would actually like you to do this to calculate the velocity of the object when it's at uh, 0.6 meters. I would like you to calculate the velocity of the object at 0.6 meters. Uh, and then part D, calculate the acceleration of the object at 0.6 meters. And remember, if they want the acceleration, it's force over mass. And if you want the force, it's negative du dx. So why don't you try those? Uh, and we'll see how those work out. Thank you very much.